is not the new Hindu rate of growth. The new Hindu rate of growth is something, but it is something that can collapse back to the old Hindu rate of growth of 3.5% if we are not careful. So the key question is, where are the places we need to act? As Mr. Alwalia said, our, our macro management has been reasonably good, but we need to up our game now. We need to bring our macro management into the 21st century. What are the things we need to do? One, fiscal deficit, too big. We need to bring it down, which means all the subsidies India keeps talking about that are inefficient, fertilizer subsidies, fuel subsidies. These are the kinds of things we've sought to remove uh, with the liberalizations in the early 1990s. We have to finish the job. And we have to finish the job because these subsidies are really leaking, going to the wrong people, going to the wrong places, creating tremendous inefficiencies. That's something the center can do. There's a lot the states can do. For example, land acquisition. One of the problems in infrastructure development is that land acquisition is really quite difficult, and for good reason. But this is something we need to do sooner rather than later, because land acquisition is holding up investment projects. Similarly, you could argue environment. Environment is a big issue, but at the same time, you can't sort of have the same kinds of environmental standards as the West. We need to find a way to grow without a huge amount of pollution, but we, ha we need to you know, create factories where there aren't factories. What are the trade-offs we're willing to accept? That's the kind of debate we need to have. There are no absolutes here. You can't say no growth, but also you can't say environment doesn't matter. What's, what's the consensus? That consensus is difficult to develop in a democracy. It takes more time. But we can't keep saying we have infinite time. We don't. And that's, in a sense, what I want to end with. The macroeconomic indicators are saying we don't have enough time. If we want to grow, keep growing at 8.5%, we've reached the capacity. Inflation is telling us we don't have that much more spare capacity. Let's move on all these dimensions, which we need to move on in order to get that growth to be sustainable again. I'd like to turn to you now, uh, Mr. Roya, and particularly perhaps I think it's a theme of yours um, since it's already been raised, uh, manufacturing and the future thereof. Uh, I mean, clearly, if you're, an, if you're a manufacturer or in the industry in India today, uh, we are pretty much in a good spot. We've got uh, a very good, uh, very strong demand story in front of us. I think the, the, the two major concerns which I, which I, which I probably identify uh, one of them is clearly natural resources and raw materials. Uh, we, we clearly do not have sufficient raw materials uh, to meet all our needs. We, we currently import close to 80% of uh, our, our oil and gas, and, uh, and increasingly uh, coal and iron ore and other uh, raw materials are getting imported. And in the places where we do have our own natural resources, uh, in many cases they are not accessible for development to the private sector. And the inflation which we are going to see because of the demand uh, growing with, with India and China uh, are going to make these raw materials availability and pricing both uh, scarce. Uh, I think the other, uh, uh, that basically leads to our concern of inflation or my concern of inflation, uh, which, is, which will be driven, we've discussed food, uh, food inflation, but also raw material inflation. Uh, we have seen that once, once these prices go beyond a certain level, uh, that it can have a fairly big impact on demand. And that could be one major factor which can slow down our demand or our manufacturing uh, consumption story. I'd like to turn to you, Beth Comstock, if I may, and we'll just end up with the outsiders. Uh, um, what does it feel like trying to do business with India? I, I think we look at India and China both as incredible opportunities. Some similarities between the two um, in terms of the kind of industries that, that are our strength. Uh, healthcare, very important. Uh, I think we see expressed over and over, especially in India, the healthcare needs, the ability to innovate in India, um, especially in healthcare, and, and a shift for us to innovate in India for India. Um, and I would say uh, the other industries where we continue to see good growth, uh, clearly it's the, the demographics that are fueling it. Obviously, if you look at both China and India, one-third of the world's population coming from these two markets, so very people-rich, high-intellect high intellect, um, countries. But we've also focused, uh, what we like in, about India is the entrepreneurialism. 
um, the, the, the uh, uh, aggressive nature of the intellect in India and the ability to partnership. So those are the kind of things that we look at. So India, I can't stress how important it is for GE. It's, it's been reprioritized, and um, we, we think the future is very exciting there, as we do in China. Thank you very much. I wonder whether the story for Walmart is quite as attractive. Um, first of all, I'll say that Walmart is very enthusiastic about India and about the people of India. Um, for context, the current situation today is that Walmart has had a sourcing operation in India for many years, buying merchandise for other markets, but just as of the last few years has got more involved in the retail business. Um, foreign direct investment is not allowed today for multi-brand retail. Um, it is allowed for cash and carry or wholesale business, and we've opened um, six small cash and carries so far in the country, and together with a franchise relationship, a partnership with Barty, um, we have over 100 stores that we support the back end for with merchandising and logistics and things like that. And that's enabling us to learn more about the customer, and we're excited about that. Um, but we would like to, to make the argument that opening up FDI for um, further retail investment would be a wise part or wise decision on the, on the part of the country. Um, clearly, inflation is a big issue. And um, at Walmart, we're in the business of lowering prices. Um, we leverage our capabilities, our scales, logistics to be able to do that, and that would be our hope to be able to do that in India. Um, so not only lower prices, but improve the quality of the merchandise and in areas like food safety. Um, we believe that we can improve the customer experience as it relates to shelf availability, um, help protect the cold chain, and um, further the customer's interest in the market. Um, from a talent point of view, we really like what we see so far, and we've created training centers in Amritsar and New Delhi, and we'll be creating them in other markets where we're finding some terrific talent, and we're helping them learn about our business and hiring the best of the best into our own, own businesses so far together with Barty. Um, from an infrastructure point of view, we need the profitability from retail operations to escalate the amount of investment that we have, and it would be our desire to invest billions in the coming years in areas like logistics, cold chain, and in, and in stores themselves. And that store profitability, should FDI be opened up, would be in turn plowed back into the infrastructure that over time will deliver profitability for our shareholders. But we certainly recognize the need for that investment and we welcome that. Um, from a bureaucracy point of view, we're hoping that the rules are set in a simple and transparent manner. I know that's something that the government has, has certainly focused on, and that would help us. And should the government determine that it's a good time to open FDI, we hope that, that it's clear. We know that 100 percent is out of the question at this moment in time because there are concerns about what happens with piranhas and, and smaller retailers. Um, we would point to other markets. Um, we could point to several, but I, today I'll mention Mexico, where we first started our first international operation in 1991, um, and today almost half the retail market in Mexico is still done informally. So people worry about uh, retailers such as Walmart having a big impact on retail in a quick manner, and that's just not the case. It doesn't happen that quickly. The pace of it's uh, just slower because of all the things that have to be put together to make it happen. But it would be our desire to contribute in a way that would help increase the middle class, help with things like tax collection that can be plowed back into infrastructure and um, work on areas such as sustainability through direct farm and, and other methods to be a positive force for many years in India. So lots of ideas, lots of thoughts, but clearly implementation is going to be the issue. That's what the corporate sector is telling the government. Hopefully the government will follow and make sure that all the policies that they talk about are actually executed in the spirit that they were formed. Thanks for being with us.